Well, we're still with Carl Halbig from the firm of Simon and Halbig, and this is still prior to the famous art character movement for which the catalog was named Reaches of the Street. These, so, and Reaches of the Street implied what the German doll makers were saying at that time. They wanted to make dolls that would portray all of the children that you might find in a village, in a street. And there's this implied suggestion that those kind of dolls never existed before then. Well, no one's really paid attention to Carl Halbig and the fact that he indeed had been making very expressive character dolls for well over 20 years before the art character movement came along. And here are some other examples of them. I forgot to show you this one back when I was doing um, the 900 series. I left it out, but I had to bring it in here so you wouldn't miss her. Because this is the very rare 969 model. 969 with brown complexion and smiling expression. A wonderful and very rare example. One of the things, as an aside, that collectors look for when they collect brown complexion dolls is they really want to have flawless bisque because if you have rubs to the complexion or something, I mean, it, it just, it really is glaringly shows up, which it, which it doesn't in other dolls. And I'm so happy um, that Susan Hill, when she collected her dolls, I mean, she, she went for that flawless bisque and that, that's just a great mark to have. And so that was the 969. And then we have another black complexion doll and this is the only example I have from the entire 1000 series that Simon and Halbig made. Sometimes we just, they didn't seem to register a lot of models or, I don't know, they just don't show up that much. But this is their 1029 model, 1029. Again, very, very rare. One of the things I do when I'm cataloging is I do this quick data search of our files going back 20 years to see how many others we have sold of a doll. And it's in some dolls, many of the dolls in this auction, I'm coming up with none, one, five, sometimes 10, but that's in 20 years of selling. There are some really, really rare dolls here. And the 1029 model would be one of them. Simon and Halbig also, and this might've been under the inspiration of <coughs> the French doll makers, but they also, um, produced a lot of what would fall into the general category of being called exotic dolls. And their Asian models were really two very fine examples. You saw a few earlier when I showed you the little all bisque dolls that they did. And th then they had their 1129 and their 1199 uh, models of Asian children. And here are two wonderful examples of those, very distinctive. The next three dolls, what a study this is, okay? Do you know what the model is? The model is 1303, and they all have the same model. So we have a Native American, we have the Marquis, and we have a little Asian child. And the, each one has variations. He, for example, clearly has white complexion, glass eyes, and very, very stern complexion. We've had this model appear several times on a French body, so quite possibly um, made for a French store or a French manufacturer that wanted to produce it as though it were a French doll. Um, very, very distinctive, very handsome. We've also had it as a scowling woman. Um, we've, I mean, it's just in many ways. Now, glass eyes, but now look here. We now have the Native American painted eyes painted eyes. And then we have, to show you the different sizes it could be made in, the doll costumed and complexioned as an Asian child. So different variations in this, again, using the same model. Making for the French market, the 1304 clown, I'm absolutely certain that this was made it's model 1304, and I'm absolutely certain it was made almost exclusively for the French market because every example I have ever seen is on its original French body with its French costume. So again, and it, it, it's like the, the quality and the, the style that would have been sold in a store like Au Non Bleu, for example, who always were looking for novelties that they could costume in their wonderful silks and lace that they would produce in their own studio. We then have... <clears throat> the very rare um, 1358 brown complexion child. And what, notice what is different about this. 
for the first time, you seem to appear to have a model that is actually modeled as a black person. It's not a white doll that someone put a brown complexion on. So again, trying to pay attention to actually do more accurate and realistic modeling of the model. This is all a big collector favorite in this particular doll. It came in shades from ebony black to this very, very soft um, uh, so light chocolate brown. Uh, collectors tend to like this better, and I think it's because the, the complexion can really show the lips, really beautiful lips on these dolls, and they really show um, to advantage. And this particular doll, I want to hold it up so you can see, has her original costume that is actually quite wonderful. Standing next to her is a doll that is, um, well, wait a minute, we're a little out of sequence. He comes first. He is the, thir the 1339 boy. And at first you think, oh, he's just a dolly-faced doll, but he really isn't. He's very, very expressive in his character. Wonderful costume once again, little fancy Sunday best suit, model number 1339 by Simon and Halbig. And then we go to Our Lady. One of the rarest dolls in the auction. We have only had one other in all of our time, the 1339. Um, very, very extraordinary with her glass, her flirty eyes with glass rod to move the flirty eyes. Very, very different and a very expressive, appealing, compelling kind of expression on this doll. A wonderful, and I mean the size could not be better because you can always get this one in your cabinet. Just really rare, grand to have. The other, only other one we had was from the Carol Jean uh, Zolnar collection. Uh, she had this model and very great. And then we moved into the 1400 series by Simon and Halbig, of which we have some wonderful examples in the auction. And I'm going to show you here is, this is the 1428 character. And again, when you have, this one appears in the auction in a smaller size as well. But I wanted you to see this one because you really, when you got into these larger models, the a quality of definition that was made possible because of the size of the doll. I mean, you can see all of the different planes and the chubbiness and the dimples and everything about this doll is made so visible because of his large size. And again, in every one of these dolls as we go through, keep looking at the quality of the bisque. It's extraordinary. Well, that's 1428. Well, right next to him is 1488. 1488 model. And let me move this little boy with a hat so you can see her closely. Wonderful costumes again. Susan Hill had a real feel for the country style costumes and her dolls are so wonderfully costumed that way. And this one's even holding its little double-faced squeak toy whose squeak is gone. It's a wonderful piece. And in front, another rare one to find from the 1400 series. And this is the 1489 known as Erica, and check out his little stuck-out tongue. So now I bring you to the art character movement, of which the title of the catalog is taken. When, in 1910, when the art character movement was introduced, there were articles written in German magazines, and they described the faces of the dolls that were being created as faces of children of the street. And that's from all reaches of the street. And that's where we took the title for the catalog in which these wonderful dolls appear. But once again, I want to tell you my thesis, which is that the character doll movement really began some 25 years earlier, much of it in the workshops of Carl Halbig, who produced some of the most extraordinary character dolls of the late 19th century. But let's now move to the movement that is known as the art character movement. And we have two wonderful dolls over here on the left from the, from the original exhibition uh, that showed these dolls. These are from the workshops of Marion Collitz, and she wanted to produce dolls that she felt, and she was quite openly talking about this, expressed um, children of the streets. These are not the works of Carl Halbig right now, I'm 
doing you the d beginning of the movement of the art character movement. And her dolls are all so this very, very hard, almost like a, I hate to use the word composition because that really, it's more like a, a, a sculptural material, a very coarse texturing, texturing, and each was individually sculpted and modeled. And occasionally, you will find them in original, original, total costume. I'm not entirely sure that this one is completely original, but this girl is, she's as original as the day was made. And all of her multi-layered costume and she representing particular village or town in Europe. Impeccable, original finish on her. Everything was hand-painted, was hand-designed. Very, very wonderful face. And you have to choose which face you like best because each one was done individually. The call it styles are very sought after today and deservedly so. Very rare to find and very hard to find in this condition. We have this other little doll in the auction and she's a mystery. I don't know what she is, but I wanted to show her to you because in so many ways she reminds me of the call it styles, although I'm sure that's not what she is. But she's made of that same kind of textured a material on her face, very, very expressive in her um, pose. Her arms are fixed. Her whole body is fixed, actually. Um, so in, into the pose that it's in. But so in that sense, she's almost like a sculpture. But at any rate, there she is, except for her head, which pivots, which swivels back and forth. Wonderful. These are little painted on boots that she has and glued on stockings. Very wonderful doll, and if anyone knows and can tell me about this, I would be so happy to be able to share that with others and to know for myself. So please share with me if you know anything about this mystery doll. Now, Carl Halbig very, very quickly became busy with the dolls that he was making for other firms who wanted to make dolls for um, the exhibition that was going to be done at the Tights department store showing these new art character dolls. Notable among his um, firms that he did work for, of course, we all know, was Cameron Reinhardt. And the whole 100 series of dolls that Cameron Reinhardt created um, were actually made under commission in the firm of Carl Halbig. They, pour, he, they had, Cameron Reinhardt had the sculptor, they had the molds, and the porcelain was poured in the firm of Carl Halbig. So that's important to know the joint communication. Some 20 years, 15 years later, Cameron Reinhardt actually bought the Simon and Halbig firm um, and the merger became complete. But at the time the art character dolls were being made, Carl Halbig was still in charge of his company and he would make the doll heads under commission. At the same time that he was now heavily making doll heads for French firms, as well as he produced four dolls in a series that, that bear his initials from the art character movement. And that is the models 150, 150, 151, 152, and 153. And we have an example of each of them here. Very, very expressive and different looking characters. Um, little boy with molded hair is the model 153. He's kind of affectionately known as the Little Duke, although I don't think that's the name he ever had at the time. But he has wonderful brown sculpted hair, very, very desirable to find. The large girl right over here, um, she is lot number 151. And what's really wonderful is to find her in this size. Again, one of the great costumes of um, of Susan Hill with these wonderful country costumes. But when you can find these art character dolls and anything over 18 inches, that is so rare to find and so desirable, not only because of the rarity, but because once again, this larger size allowed that, that artistic sculpting to really come into full blossom. And the complexion would tend to be painted um, with a really elegant refinement, which this doll so very definitely has. The 150 model is, is right here, very wonderful, rare to find. We have a second example of the 150 model in the catalog, and curiously, it is, although it is definitely the 150 model, it is not signed. And so my suspicion is that it might have been um, 
commissioned by a French firm, for example, that wanted to have a character doll of that type? We don't know, but we do know that sometimes he didn't sign them. All right, and then we have the doll that will be, always be one of my favorite models of all time for so many things that it represents. This is Rosa Luxemburg. This is the model 152, and there is an article about it that I've written in the back of our catalog. Um, Mary Ann Sieslick first came up with this information she told me about about 10 years ago, that it was a portrait of Rosa Luxemburg. And so when I was working on this catalog, I called her and said, Mary Ann, you still believe that? Oh, she said, oh, absolutely. There is no question of it in my mind. And she worked with me on a lot of the new research she had. She pointed out to me that 1910, that we tend to think as the, like the birth date of the art character movement because of the exhibitions in the German department stores, was also the year of the international women's movement. And they wanted to declare um, this time the year of the international, the international women's year. It was headquartered in a town in Germany. And I don't, who know? We don't know about Karl Halbig. This is what I mean. We need to know more about him. Why did he take upon this cause to Leb to have modeled a portrait of one of the female leaders of this movement, who was Rosa Luxemburg? And Rosa Luxemburg, I will tell you, you can find information about her when you use the Google machine, as it is lately affectionately being called. She was a formidable person. Um, she was a leader of the women's movement, but she particularly led a movement for for poorer women to, so that they could have good paying jobs and they could have care for themselves and for their children. She was, well, she was killed early. I mean, she was killed in her 30s or early 40s, basically assassinated. But what an important person, what a great leader. You will find photographs of her in the, on the internet and in, actually in the article we put one in. And you can see that there is absolutely no question whatsoever that this doll was designed as a portrait of Rosa Luxemburg. And this year, which is an important year for women in this country, um, I think it's particularly fitting and I hope this doll goes to someone who is part of a greater movement for rights of women. Rosa Luxemburg, I present to you. We have another very, very wonderful doll that was the work of Carl Halbig and is very seldom ever found. I don't think, I'm not sure we've ever had one with a painted eye before. Um, you can find them with the glass eyes, but this is a painted eye model 128 by Simon and Halbig. Very, very rare to find and she graces the cover of the auction catalog. Very rare. And then two other dolls that are considered some of the epogee of doll collecting, both by lovers of beautiful dolls and lovers of art character dolls and just lovers of people who just want to own a beautiful doll. And this is the um, elusive model 111. Is it Cameron Reinhardt or is it Simon and Halbig? People differ in their opinion. Some say it is part of the missing number sequence of the Cameron Reinhardt character series. Um, and others say, no, it was Simon and Halbig. Now, unquestionably, the dolls were made by Simon and Halbig. You can tell from the, the style of the marking as well as the style of the doll, the type of bisque, the type of painting. But were they made and marketed by Simon and Halbig or by Cameron Reinhardt? More research needs to be done. It doesn't matter. Look at these two examples. Imagine that she could have both dolls in her collection. How absolutely extraordinary. I had someone call me yesterday that had the catalog and said, help me, help me, I can't decide which one I like. And I say the same to you. They are so beautiful. They have, they have different looks. One of them is a bit more dramatic than the other, but they both have that kind of wistful, woeful, yet absolutely charming look. Now, Kyle Halbig, was very busy making dolls for other people under commission. And I want to show you some of the art character dolls so you know just how important this man was. Remember, he had the porcelain manufacturing company. So many of the people who produced these exquisite art dolls that we all love to own would not have had them if they did not have the ability to go to him and say, look, I know you know about dolls. I know how you'll make the right look for me. Here's my model. 
make this style for me and I'm going to show you some.